要坐在 C 位。你让开。Another day, another video in China. So today I am planning to shoot something nice. We're gonna go to some nice areas. Gonna show you guys how Chinese rich people live their life. But before that, I wanted to show you guys the gears I have been using because a lot of people are asking me. My gears are actually pretty simple. I don't really use any fancy equipment. First of all, I don't think I am. Eagle to shoot any cinematic videos. I just want to do the authentic, simple way. It's easier for me, honestly. But I think that's what people actually really like. I appreciate. That's why. So first of all, what do I have? I have a GoPro, extremely functional. I'm actually thinking about getting a DJI Pocket camera as well. Basically works the same, but just smaller. And this is actually a GoPro 8. It's like very very old, but still works. Another one is I have this camera. I got it last year. It's from Sony. So the model is ZV-E10. And you can shoot 4K videos. It's great for taking photos as well. This one I got it like, it's a very old camera, and I haven't been using for about two years now. It's just sitting in my closet for so long. And then what I'm using the most at the moment is the phone I'm filming right now. So I just adjusted to 4K. So the quality, it's so good. Today all the footage is gonna be filming with this phone. You guys will see that. And also look, I got a microphone. Yes, I got a microphone. Some people are complaining, Bianca, your video is great, but you really need to get an external microphone. So yeah, someone got it to me. I'm not gonna say who. <laughs> people are like, Bianca, you have a sugar daddy. Yes, my sugar daddy got it for me. Also, my new power adapter just arrived. This is a all-in-one adapter from a brand called Tessin. This is exactly what I need. Look how many sockets it has. So you can use it in Australia, the U.S. You can use it in U.K. and also you can use it in Europe. Well, basically that just means you can use anywhere in the world. Also here on this side you have four different USB parts as well. And with this adapter you can charge up to six different devices at one time. That is really really cool. I had something similar like this before, but honestly, the quality is nothing compared to this. It just keeps dropping when I put it on the wall like this. But check this one out. It's solid, but it's also light. This little lucky thing gonna travel the world with me now. If you desire to purchase one of these, you can find the link in the description. All right, now I'm gonna leave all of my babies to charge, and my girlfriend's gonna pick me up. Let's head on the road. Let's go. My friend, Xuan. Xuan. <laughs> so uh, we've been to Sri Lanka before, and she was just giving me shit that I still haven't published the video from Sri Lanka, and that was like almost half a year ago. And also another friend of mine is here as well. Hi. So she's taking some photos for us. Um, so yeah, we came to this. I don't know how you call this. It's like a park, but inside of this park, there are a lot of uh, different. <coughs> ah! Oh, sorry. Lots of shops, uh, cafes, and right next to me it's Arabica. So we're gonna go have some nice coffee. I'm gonna catch up a little bit, and yeah, I wanna show you guys this area. And later on, uh, we will go to a French restaurant, which is about 30 minutes drive from here. Yeah, just want to show you guys a little bit of the, you know, upscale side of the life in China. Let's do this. Actually, quite surprised. There's so many cafes like this, right? Like in Chengdu, in China. Because when I was talking with my friends um, who have never been to China, and they would assume that in China we probably don't have something like this. 
And honestly, when I first walk in, first of all, I'm really impressed of the decoration inside. It's very simple and it doesn't really cost much to build this place, but it's very tasteful. And all the tables, like everything, it just like feels right. And when I come inside, I just see everybody's very dressed up, very stylish, and I was even telling my friends it feels like it's sort of like events where all the influencers from China, you know, being like just gathering here, like doing something together. So I'm not sure how you guys perceive Chinese, but to me, especially in Chengdu, it's a very fashionable place. Uh, very stylish city, so you would see really a lot, a lot of people dressing so well. Basically, like everyone here looks pretty posh. It feels pretty nice here, and they have a lot of like bread, uh, very nice coffee. And another funny thing, yes, uh, this park has so many dogs. So not just my friend has hit her two dogs in this cafe, but we got another two in that corner. They're just so extremely cute. My friends' dog are also like very happy because you know they just they get to meet so many new friends here as well. And now I think we're probably gonna just walk around a little bit, see what's inside because this is my first time here as well. I have no idea what is going on, and it's so close to our place, to my mom's uh, apartment. So maybe in the future I'll be able to come here more often. Okay, guys. So in Bali, you will have the <laughs> bread with knife and fork. But when you're in China, they give you glove. This is hilarious. How to ma? I made chicken. You're strong. You think it's good? So this is a, a chocolate cinnamon. Looks pretty good to me. It's really good. How much was that? Mm, I think four dollars. Oh, they sell this for four dollars. Okay, guys, so we just came into a shop which is next to this cafe. Ah, uh, they've got a lot, a lot of different stuff in this shop. Some glass. Oh, that is so adorable. It's a um, raincoat. Raincoat. Yes, that is adorable. So I've got a lot of stuff here. I've got some books, um, hats, baseball hats, lamps, a lot of things. Mm. It's really, really nice. So it's about 26 US dollars, I would say. So this is us today. We're a big team. To be honest with you, this is nothing like something super, super special. But because this whole area in Chengdu, in the city, it's like a new area. So Chengdu has slowly moving the city center to the south, which is around where my mom lives. And I think the most expensive um, area is here. Like you will find villas here, which is right by the lake and cost tens of millions or hundreds of millions around this area. Lots of celebrities are living here. Um, yeah, huge houses, very expensive stores, nice cafes. Um, yeah, it's like, oh yeah. We have also hats. <laughs> yeah, like walking, you know, like walking around here, you just see everybody's dressed so well, like very sophisticated, and it's a very different vibe than the the um, how say like old town, but not like old town, but like the hot spots. So where hot spots, 
compared to 10 years ago in Chengdu, which I'm also going to be showing you guys in the next few days. But yeah, this is the vibe of the new city. Chengdu, you just saw this is actually a little chair. Wow, you can actually move it as well. Uh huh. This is super cute. You look so cute in this chair. So, Chang'e Yi, we've been knowing each other for about like 10 years now, I think. Yeah. Old friends. 10 years. Yeah. Look at this sunglasses my friend got. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, Chengge Yi was just mentioned that the reason why they're building so much like parks like this in this area is because they, well, ultimately they just want to, you know, um, sell the real estate around this area. You have to build some type of community to make this area look nice in order for people to buy your houses here. Right, so that makes sense. Wow, I just realized where we are. You know, before I was working in an event company, so we used to be like just trying to find the best location for events, especially when we were working a lot with real estate companies. And this place, I've been here like about maybe seven, seven years ago. Uh, this is the most expensive villa in the whole Chengdu. So behind me, it's called Black Pearl, I believe, or something like that. So basically, this is a very nice, I think it's probably like a man-made lake, but you got this huge, massive villa, which is right located next to the lake. And before you go home, you actually have to take a boat. So we're sitting right next to this pier and I remember back eight years ago there was already like over 10 million um, a Chinese yuan and now I'm pretty sure it's probably like I don't know four times five times more or like triple I have no idea but yeah back then it was really really expensive because most of apartments are less than a million and this is like over 10 million and now obviously Eight years ago, there was nothing around. It was just like this black pearl villas. But now they have built this amazing complex. And this is actually a museum. So in this complex, you got cafes, library, museum, and uh, clothing stores. You just get everything. And also behind that villa complex, you got these very, very nice, super unique looking apartments building as well, which is over there, I believe, with probably like about, I don't know. Uh, now it's probably over 10 million, I believe. You can see a place where you can buy. 300,000 people should be 3,000,000. Oh, wow. Mm. So my friend just told me, uh, they're all like a very big uh, flat. So around like 300 meter, uh, square meters. It cost about, cost about 30 million uh, Chinese yen. And I think actually one of my friends bought an apartment there. So yeah, pretty sick. Has nothing to do with me. Good for him. Yeah, like like oh, they have oh, God. So these apartments, they every one of them have their own pool in the apartment. That's sick. And they look like a very unique like logo, Lego, Lego looking. It's pretty sick. Yeah. <laughs> All right, all right. So now it's about like 7 p.m. I had a reservation for us. We're gonna go to a French restaurant today. Xiao Shen, uh, Shen, she is driving us. This is our driver, the beautiful driver. She's actually mom now. Be careful. Oh, <laughs> what? She's pregnant for three months now. Is this your car? 
，这这个是你的车吗？上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上上In the process of developing, we live somewhere there, and the city is back there. So I drove here so many times, and it was all looking like this back in like 15 years ago. It was just like completely land, and now it's the most expensive area though of the whole city. Time flies in China to be just like keep developing, and it's de developing so fast. 三月，我们吃饭啦。所以说你们吃，我也没得吃。<laughs> All right, so three of us gonna sit in the back. Gonna learn how to Okay, go, go, go. Go, 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 go. You're too high, Gao. Now I see. Now I'm gonna fight. Now I'm gonna fight. Couldn't climb up. Yeah. Okay. And I have my crutches. So I'm all prepared. <laughs> French dishes with a twist. So for example, uh, these will be more like uh, Sichuan snacks that you have. Or this is typical muscle you can find in France. The prawns also are very, very popular in, uh, in China. And hummus is from Morocco, actually. So it's also linked with the French culture. So it's good to, to share, right? So where do I begin? So this is hummus. And they were saying it's quite spicy, so I guess they have combined the citron flavor with French flavor. Mm. It's like citron pickle with hummus. And then we have this. I was asking them, do they have snails? Unfortunately, they don't have snails. Actually, in Chengdu, we do eat snails. So, they're probably gonna bring it to the menu. They also prepare chopstick. It's a bit weird, but it's quite functional. It's pretty good. So I was very <laughs> interested to know if uh, you feel the Sichuan pepper in uh, this creme brulee because we think that chocolate and Sichuan pepper is a very good match. Very interesting flavor. Chocolate with the Sichuan pepper. So we were talking about a little bit of backstory of the, why you opened. Yeah. Yes, so I realized after a few years in, uh, in China, talking to my friends, my customers, that uh, the vision of uh, French food in, uh, in China, and especially uh, Chengdu, was only fine dining. So these uh, typical uh, French restaurants with a uh, white uh, like atmosphere, which I think is, uh, is quite like, cliché and a bit boring for a group of Chinese who want to enjoy. Uh, wine together, so that's why we wanted to, to pick the best of China and pick the best of France to make like a enjoyable environment to, to eat French food. <laughs> what is this? Fago Baijo. Oh, Fago Baijo. I call it Fago Baijo, it's made by fruits, and if you can guess how the fruits came inside. Oh. It's a pier, no? Yeah, yeah. How did it get inside? They put the bottle on the tree directly and they let the fruit grow inside. Oh. It's very good. Like we, we like to use it as a digestive in France. It's after dinner. That was a very, very nice dinner. I would say the hummus was definitely my favorite because it combined with the citron flavor, citron pickle as well. And then the steak was amazing. 
and then we had this chicken. Chicken is so good. In the end, we had this Sichuan paper with um, chocolate. The place it just opened about a month ago, if I remember it correctly. So yeah, if you happen to be in this area, I will put the name somewhere here, so you will see that. And also after about probably 9 p.m., they turn into sort of like a bar. So if you're not looking for dinner, you can still come here for a cup of drink with your girlfriend or with your friends. It's a great spot.